Hello everybody, for today's project I wanted to put this axe head onto a handle that I bought. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to clean up the inside of that axe head. You don't want any uh, metal burrs in there or any debris. You can see I used the file to help clean it out and I'm using a rag here. Now after you clean it up, you need to test fit the axe head onto the handle. Now by doing this, you'll see how much you need to sand off of the handle to get the axe head to fit on all the way. And there you can see the lines I'm pointing to. You need to, you need to sand those lines down. Here I'm using an oscillating tool just with a sanding attachment. It makes it very easy and a lot faster than using sandpaper. It will take multiple test fits. There you can see it's coming up a bit farther, but it will leave you another line so you can sand it again. Now I am using a hammer. I, I had sanded it for about 20-30 minutes and I'm using that the hammer to kind of bang it on. As you can see that the wood is starting to come out of the top. So now I'm going to unpackage my wedges. You should only put glue on the bottom half of the wooden wedge. That way you don't make a big mess and you don't get the glue everywhere. Just put it on the bottom half. Now I did just hammer this in without any extra piece of wood. Some people I've seen like to use a 2x4 on that, but I thought it was a bit more precise just to use the hammer. There you can see it's nice at the top. I did put some extra glue in it just to fill up some of the extra cracks. You don't have to do that, but you need to make sure you get your two metal wedges in. These will help to further expand the wood and to make sure your, your axe head does not come off. These you will want to put at an angle, just like you can see there. You don't want it touching the sides of the axe head, the metal part, you just want it to help expand the wood. Now that both of those are pushed on, I let my axe um, cure or dry for uh, two days just to make sure it's nice and dry. So here's the final reveal, you can see the axe is on. I've I put some extra glue on there, it looks a little ugly, but I think I'm going to sand that down. I also put a bit of an edge on it, nothing too fancy. I would like to make this a bit cleaner. Here you can see it's not very big, I believe this one is 28 inches, so it's not incredibly long. It's about uh, kind of the medium size for mine, but I want to try chopping some wood, and here we go. I am really quite happy with this $20 handle from Canadian Tire and, and this uh, the head is older than I am but I really quite enjoy it. The mark on this wood, let's see if we can find it, it's actually quite thick and the tree isn't quite dead yet, it's, I don't know, like 90% dead so there's still a little bit of moisture in it, but as it's cut, 
They'll dry out quite a bit faster. She's okay. I want to show you guys here something. When you're splitting with an axe, it's gonna be a little hard to see with your, when you're splitting with an axe and some moisture comes up right there, you can see that. That's when you know there's still too, too much moisture in it to burn it. So all this, what I've just cut, this I won't be burning yet, I'll let this sit out in the sun for at least a week. Sitting out in the sun will help dry it up. This, I'm gonna bring out the big axe, see how the big axe does. So here's a bit of the size comparison with the axe that I just threw the handle on. It's just kind of a, just a plain kind of splitting axe. This is the Fiskars X27. This one has a much, much wider face on the top. And it's much longer. This one I believe is 36 inches long. Yeah, it's quite a bit longer. You got a lot more. You get a lot more leverage with this one. Ooh, that was a good one. That's what I'm saying. Cheers, the axe. Uh, the handle is feeling really good in the hands. And I could put a bit of a better edge on there, but it's pretty tight.